I think, um, you know, I've, I've been studying, after I left the Depute project, uh, I've been uh, studying sort of the only hard currency or on, only hard facts of, of the climate debate, which is the, the steady collapse of, of the, um, the Arctic, the sea ice. Uh, and so that is kind of sort of undeniable proof that we are going south, if you understand. Are you there? Yeah, literally. Uh, I, I think literally the North Pole is sliding to the south, uh, yeah. not figuratively and, and literally. Uh, so your, your special interest is, well, living where you do, uh, would be the would be the collapse of the Arctic sea ice. Yeah, it's uh, because it's um, it's sort of a as Paul Beck Beck with says, it's it's not a local uh, problem. It's uh, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. So it's like we have very good data for what's happening up there, and the consequences are global, and it's very very short term. I was quite shocked, you know, a couple of months ago when I, when I realized uh, how short term it is that we lose all the sea ice in 12 months of the year, you know? So. When do you predict we're going to see an ice free Arctic? Sounds like you do a, you, you do a lot of reading on the subject and studying it. So what's mm. your call? I, there's two different uh, ice freeze. One is the summer ice free, which could happen, you know, any any time, like this summer or next. But the, the much harder question, or the much uh, more, you know, civilization collapsing question, is when we lose the winter ice. And uh, for now, you know, with just the just the losses we've had uh, over the past year and the past two years, just the average losses we've had in ice volume, uh, those trends po point towards 24 and 25, you know? Then that's sort of the end. Are, are you saying 24 and 25 years out, or the years 2024 and 2025? I'm afraid this is the last thing, the 2024, 2025, so... So that seven or seven or eight years, you're looking at the handwriting on the wall. You're calling a a, a permanently ice-free Arctic in seven or eight years. Yeah, but that's on, that's only if it's linear and if it doesn't speed up. And everything uh, everything yeah. tells us it's going to speed up. You know, it's not going to just go in a steady decline like that because uh, you get stronger and stronger feedbacks and. At the end, it's you know just some ice flake here and there, and it's um, it's going to be rough. So, so who are some of the uh, your references? Who who do you study and and listen to and recommend to other people just starting down this rabbit hole? Who would you recommend they they tune into for more on this? Uh, I've created the um, Arctic Sea Ice uh, group on Facebook, and I, I encourage people to go on there. And uh, oh, so you're the so you're the the one who created that? Yeah, I created it okay. in uh, in the last days of January this year. So it's a very new group, okay. about a hundred uh, members. Uh, but oh, uh, right. to answer your question, I, I'm not. Uh, I try not to be so people centric. Uh, so I, I recommend. At least for the Arctic stuff, I recommend just looking at the data uh, yourself. You know, that's what I do because I'm an anarchist, and I don't, I don't trust fucking anyone. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just fi finding anyone to trust. So, I mean, everyone always wonders, uh, I, I hate just to default to this, but it just gives a yardstick. So, are you part of the? Which side of this uh, of this ramping up Paul Beckwith versus Guy Ferson, uh, Guy McPherson debate? Are are, are you falling? Are, are you falling on one side or the other for for these guys escalating battle between the two of them? You know, I'm, I I love both of them, so so I don't uh, I'm not going to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm the same way. It's uh, on, on one hand, it's it, 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 it's somewhat humorous, but it's really sad 
to see to see these two guys uh, slugging it out like this all over Facebook and YouTube uh, when when we all need to be working together. There's so there's so few of us who who get it. I think it's, uh, I think the, the maybe the explanation is what uh, you alluded to the the other day on on YouTube. You know, you said that uh, people love drama and people. You just grasp for the drama because then they don't have to t think about uh, the collapse and the demise of civilization. So maybe that's an element of it. Well, let so, but you're you're not with. Uh, well, I won't put words in your mouth. Are you or are you not with uh, with a guy that we've got? Let, let's call it ten years. Do you, do you see us being extinct in ten years? Is it this bad, or you think we're going to come through this to the other side? Yeah, I've been I've been uh, YouTubing and thinking a bit about that, and uh, I consciously um, uh, choose to focus on on when we lose civilization because that's much easier, you know, to 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 yeah. to, to, to point out. Uh, and then the other very hard thing is like when will this species or the other species uh, go? That's very very difficult because you have like you have eight thousand meter high mountains in Asia, you have uh, islands in the Pacific, you have uh, Arctic areas like uh, Greenland and Canada, you know, it's like uh, the planet isn't uh, all London or New York, uh, so, yeah, so yeah. The, the whole planet won't react in the same way. It will be, uh, I'm sure, decades between when, when one part goes and the other part goes. So I, I think uh, civilization or uh, society will will collapse at some point in the next decade in most parts of the world. But I think uh, I'm pretty sure some people will be able to hold out, you know, till mid-century yeah. anyway, so just to survive. Now, are you, yeah. are you like, like me and Guy and, and Derek Jensen, are you a promoter of... Uh, the collapse of, of global industrial civilization to save the biosphere, or are you more like Paul Beckwith and thinking it's something that we should try to fix and and save at this point? I'm pretty sure, you know, I haven't done that many magic mushrooms as, as you've been talking about, but, uh, <laughs> but in, on some of those uh, trips to the to the woods, I've got pretty pretty clear messages from the other critters living out there that they wouldn't mind civilization just going away. You know, they wouldn't mind us. They, they look at us uh, as uh, demons, you know. That's, that's my interpretation. That the other animals and, and plants, they look at humans as demons when we are out there in the woods. Well, I, I have to say the, uh, the 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 photograph you sent me is I I, I love the irony of uh, now uh, we were talking before we started recording I, I I know why we had to take this beautiful birch tree out but that is uh, that, that's I, I don't know that was just a I I just enjoy the irony. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know. Uh, of the, when you talk about the animals and plants, uh, thinking of us as demons. So you're holding a what is that? A giant bow saw, and your buddy's holding an an axe there. That's right. I mean, uh, we struggled for hours to get that one tree down. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at least you didn't use a chainsaw or a. Or uh, we want, we wanted to we it. wanted to use a chainsaw, but uh, it uh, was defunct. You know, it wasn't. You know, it was some kind of uh, mechanical error. It, so. There, you, don't don't you love it when uh, when the chainsaw won't start? I, uh, <laughs> I I have to admit, I love using chainsaws. I, I go berserk when you put a chainsaw in this old eco Nazi's <laughs> hand. But uh, I always get a chuckle when uh, when I get all prepped to go out there in the woods with my gas suck and chainsaw, and it will not start. There, there's nothing that you know that makes you feel humbled than a gas-powered chainsaw that will not start while you're cranking and cranking and cussing it, <laughs> and the tree is just sitting there laughing at you <laughs> and thoroughly enjoying your temper tantrum. 
Uh, I know it's exactly hey man, what I want to talk uh, uh, about, uh, obviously, one, one of the big debates uh, that I've certainly been uh, talking about, because I don't know, as, as I admitted just a couple of days ago, is the whole methane bomb thing. Uh, I, I mean, you hear, you can go on. This is this debate is one. No matter where your position is, you can go on and and research it yourself. And whatever your preconceived notion is, you can find scientific reports to to back up. So I'm sure you have studied this issue probably more than me. So I'm curious. Where do you fall on the uh, along the the methane bomb debate and uh, how it's going to impact abrupt climate change and, and when if you believe it is when do you think it's going to blow? Yeah, I've, uh, I've kind of placed it on the timeline between now and when we have uh, no winter ice, no winter sea ice. So I would say any time between. Um, September this year and uh, 2020, pretty much. We will have uh, this huge, you know, like 50 gigaton or whatever, uh, plume of, uh, of methane from the, uh, what I call the, the East Bumblefuck Sea in, <laughs> in the Arctic, yeah. uh, uh, East Siberian Sea, uh, because that's very shallow. It's like up to 50 meters uh, deep. And um, you heat up that um, that water in the summer, and it also heats, heats up the uh, seabed, and then you have a thaw. So and then kaboom. kaboom! So you do not agree with uh, with, with Paul's latest. Uh, it's he not. Seemed you to know, it's, it's not. USGS report hook, line, and sinker. It's not really. Uh, it's not really Paul, you know, because uh, he, he even said in his uh, YouTube that this is. I'm just relaying this USGS report, you know, uh, and he did that in four videos or something. And you know, USGS, the the Geological Service, that's directly under the president. So, you know, if you <laughs> elect the wrong president in your country, uh, the USGS will be at his service. You know, so it's like political science. But that report was written under Obama, not under Trump. That. That was that. True, but uh, it's like uh, you know what's what's the difference? You know what's what, what, what's the difference? You know, and they're writing now that uh, Donald will have a hard time to to get the uh, oil and gas production as high as uh, Obama was able to get it during his period. So, you know, so it's no big well, difference. Well, let's talk about uh, over there in Norway. What is the how would you say so? I, I hear the the approval rating for Donald Trump in his own country. Uh, I, I think one poll shows thirty six percent is you know it's the worst. Uh, he is the least popular president ever since they started polling. Where would you if they took a poll of Norwegians today on uh, supporting uh, Donald Trump? What do you think the support level in Norway? would be for Donald Trump. You know, Norway is a very naive uh, country or population, so it will probably be like 60, 70, 80 percent uh, against against him, just because our mainstream media are just going crazy uh, about yeah. being anti-Trump. Uh, you know, they don't have news anymore, it's just anti-Trump, you know? Well, yeah, that's, uh, you know, he's doubled my workload. I mean, I just did, you know, every Friday now, you know, it used to be, as I say, it used to be the easiest day of the week for me to do my ecological meltdown roundup ramp, but now I have to do two <laughs> entirely different. One is just is all Donald all the time, and one is every other threat against the planet other than Donald Trump. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, he completely, I mean, here in the mainstream, in the mainstream media, uh, any environmental news, I would say Donald Trump dominates about 70 percent, if not higher, 
Yeah. Uh, and then even when you go on over to Alternet, to their environment pages, about 70% of the environmental stories on planet Earth have the word Trump in, in, in the headline. And, and so I don't know what I don't know what to do about it. it, it do you ignore him? Well, don't you think don't you think this is kind of uh, done on purpose for some reason? I don't I have no clue why, but it seems it's a big, you know, um, detraction or what do you call it? Uh, distraction. Distraction, yeah, from everything. You know, it's like Trump, 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 Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, enough about enough yeah. about that guy. Oh, I know what I wanted to uh, to to uh, mention when we were talking about the uh, the uh, the methane bomb debate. Now, the other big debate that I see, which which I believe is going to turn in once we get our minds a little bit off of Donald Trump, uh, is the whole geoengineering debate. Where do you do you think? Do you think it's a good idea, and whether or not? First, I want to know: Do you think? Uh, and, and I'm particularly talking to solar radiation management. A, is it a good or bad idea? And and B, whichever way you think on that, is it ever going to happen, or is it complete techno utopian uh, pipe dream? Yeah, I would have to go a bit. Uh easy or careful here but you know, because you know um, if uh, you or I wanted to for any reason do the opposite you know to, to get it to heat up faster to make civilization go away faster <laughs> uh, some people in 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 America would maybe view that as ter terrorism if you want to take out the entire planetary system you know so um, but uh, to answer your question about uh, spreading sulfur and stuff to, to, to shut out the sun, isn't that what they did in, uh, in the Matrix, in the movie? You know, they tried to beat the, uh, the AI, the machines. So they tried yeah. to, to block their uh, solar cells by, by fucking up the atmosphere. Isn't that sort uh -huh. of the plot there? So, uh, I don't know. But um, I don't think they will have time. I, I mean... If they if they are working on these timelines from the silly IPCC climate panel, they they think they have decades of or centuries to fix fix things, you know. <laughs> so 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 maybe they will be be fooled by the, their own you know crap science that they do, they think they can start this in 2025 or something, you know. So, so then it will never, never happen. Do you think some some either rogue country or, or crazy billionaire like Bill Gates or whoever it ends up or Elon Musk or someone because right now there's nothing there's no laws to prevent apparently you or me from blowing off an anthropogenic uh, volcano if we can think about it do you see I any danger of that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in the next two or three years yeah uh, or do you think it's so in its infancy that there's that's nothing to worry about I think you have to remember, uh, Hambo, that uh, uh, these things will have to be done every day, every week for decades. So it's like if, let's say that, you know, everybody uh, seems to like to hate Putin. Let's say that uh, Vladimir Putin, you know, would release a lot of uh, sulfur to shut out the uh, sun over the Arctic. Uh, then you could just, you know, move in and make him stop doing that. Because uh, this is something that you would have to renew and do do all the time for decades uh, so, i think it's not just decades it's, it's more like millennia yeah yeah so so the 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 moment the, the you moment start, you can't stop the moment you stop doing it you will get a five degree jump you know so, yeah. so it's like so so, so the, 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 back the the tube yeah, the, you know, the problem is I mean, once once you open this can of worms, brother, you you better uh, you better have one hundred percent confidence in it. You so need you need to have all your early you ducks in a row. Engineering is going to save this civilization from collapse. I don't I don't hear that anywhere in your voice. Uh, I think uh, I think our goose is already cooked. Geoengineering or not. Okay, I, we're good, good Lord. We're already over 25 minutes into this interview. You, 
you emailed me a couple of days ago, and I want you to hear to, to – I just want you to take off. You were talking about the climate deception plan or remind me and, and, and uh, explain to our listeners what what your uh, what that's all about that you were writing me about. the, the cli- What is the climate deception going on on this planet? I think it's, uh, to cut it short, it's um, the whole uh, UN climate panel. Um, it's not what it's cracked up to be. Uh, I think it's a clever deception to to pretend that uh, the UN is going to fix everything. Uh, and I think if you study it more closely, it goes very much hand in hand with the big oil um, long term planning to be able to pump and sell oil and gas forever or until the whole thing collapses. So I don't think it's uh, proper science. I think it's politicized, just as the, the deniers would say, that the IPCC is politicized. And uh, you have, uh, actually you have governments uh, censoring uh, the few scientists uh, who are actually doing a, a good job there. Then the, the government of Saudi Arabia or America can just say, no, can, can we delete that chapter? I don't like that graph. So, yeah. so that's that's sort of the working of the IPCC. But I think it's a huge um, deception uh, to control the whole uh, climate debate because everybody believes that the climate panel is doing a good and excellent job, but they're not. They're clearly not because they they tell us that the the Arctic sea ice in summer will last until uh, 2080 or 2090. Some Bull crap like that, like that. So they're clearly not uh, doing an honest job. And I'm going to take a wild guess that you do not have much faith in the Paris Climate Agreement keeping uh, global temperatures from rising uh, under two degrees Celsius between now and the year 2100. Is that a safe bet? Yeah, pretty much. But you know, we will always have, have Paris. You know, it's a beautiful city. <laughs> Well, you mentioned it, it sounds like you, you are pretty convinced, as I am, that uh, that global industrial civilization is teetering on the the the, uh, the brink of collapse and and possibly the planet, right? But behind that, so just. You know, I always like to talk with, with with people. I mean, how is this affecting your life? I mean, how do you, you know, being down this rabbit hole and just realizing how hopeless this situation is? How do you keep? What is your secret from just from just you know falling into just an absolute existential despair, depression? What do you do to keep from that happening in your own life? I think uh, my solution is um, the old solution from Schopenhauer. Uh, 